What is Learn Helplessness? Well, when Indian elephant trainers capture a baby elephant, they begin their training by tying his leg with a rope to a small stake. While still a baby, the elephant doesn't have the strength to break free, and after fighting for several days, it simply gives up. In its mind, anything the elephant does is useless, it is trapped there forever. But interestingly, when that same elephant is fully grown and can literally tear the ground apart, it is still tied with the same rope and stake. Sadly, it learned from its past trials that anything it does is in vain, so it just stopped trying. And maybe you did too. You wanted to accomplish something, a goal of yours, achieve an athletic body, be healthier, happier, but just couldn't do it. It's possible that sometime in the past you were exposed to aversive stimuli, stimuli that were unpleasant or painful, you were unable to change them or willingly avoid any subsequent encounters, so you become conditioned to simply accept them as they are. You accepted that you're not good enough and just like the fully grown elephant, you simply stopped trying. This is the theory of learned helplessness, the science in its antidote. But how do we know learned helplessness really exists? Well, in the year 1967, while at the University of Pennsylvania, American psychologist Martin Seligman conducted the research shocking dogs in harnesses. The research consisted of three groups of dogs. The first one was just a control group, dogs were simply put in a harness for a period of time and were later released. Group 2 and 3 consisted of joint pairs, meaning they received the same stimuli. Dogs in the second group were given electric shocks at random times, which the dog could end by pressing a lever. However, dogs in group 3 received the same shock as their paired dog in group 2, but its liver did not stop the shock. To a dog in group 3, it seemed that the shock ended at random times, because it was their paired dog in the second group that was causing it to stop. Thus, for dogs in the third group, the shock was simply inescapable. To conclude the experiment, the same three groups of dogs were tested in a box containing two rectangular compartments divided by a barrier a few inches high. All of the dogs were shocked, but could escape them simply by jumping over the barrier to the other compartment. The dogs in group 1 and 2 quickly learned this task and escaped the shock. Most of the group 3 dogs, which had previously learned that nothing they did stopped the shocks, simply lay down passively and whined while they were shocked. The dogs did not try to escape because they expect that nothing they do will stop the shock. To disrupt the expectation, experimenters physically picked up the dogs and moved their legs imitating the actions the dog would need to take in order to escape from the electrified grid. This had to be done at least twice before the dogs would start willfully jumping over the barrier on their own. The impact of learned helplessness has been demonstrated in different animal species, but its effect is also seen in people. Some of the symptoms in children include failure to ask for help, frustration, giving up, poor motivation and procrastination. And these symptoms can propagate further in life as we grow older. As people age, learned helplessness can become something of a vicious cycle. When encountering problems such as anxiety or depression, people may feel that nothing can be done to ease the feelings. Luckily, that's not true. The antidote? Learned optimism. Martin Seligman published this in his book Learned Optimism. The benefits of an optimistic outlook are many. Optimists are higher achievers and have better overall health. Learned optimism techniques were found to significantly reduce depression in a class of college freshmen. So how do you exactly practice learned optimism? Well, you simply need to focus on the three steps or three P's. First is permanence. Optimistic people believe bad events to be more temporary than permanent, and after a failure, they bounce back quicker, whereas others may take longer or may even never recover. They also believe good things happen for reasons that are permanent, rather than seeing them as something short-lived. In other words, optimists point to specific, temporary causes for negative events, while pessimists tend to look for permanent causes. Second is pervasiveness. Optimistic people categorize helplessness. If they fail at one particular area and feel helpless, they don't let it affect other areas of their life, whereas pessimistic people generalize failure, so that failure in one area of life means failure in life as a whole. Optimistic people also allow good events to brighten every other area of their life rather than just the particular area in which the event occurred. And finally, personalization. Optimists blame bad events externally on causes outside of themselves, whereas pessimists blame themselves for the events that occur. Optimists are generally more confident and quickly internalize positive results, while pessimists externalize them, they credit outwards and blame inwards. 
these are the three P's, permanence, pervasiveness and personalization. I really encourage you to practice these three steps in your next situation when you feel overwhelmed and helpless. If you fail your next exam, that doesn't mean you're not good enough for your degree, it just means you didn't prepare as much as you'd like. It is a simple, temporary cause rather than something permanent. Also this failure in that particular exam doesn't necessarily mean you're bad in other areas or subjects. Isolate the problem and don't extrapolate it to other areas, because literally that is not true. You need to stop generalizing failure. And if you do pass your exam, don't belittle yourself and say, I'm not that good, the exam was just easy. Stop the vicious cycle of crediting outwards and blaming inwards. As we close this video, I just want to remind you that whatever situation you're in and you think that this is how things are and always been, is not true. You're just the puppy that's being shocked, while peace and success is right on the other side of the barrier. Don't let negative events from the past determine your future. I really hope these videos help. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.